welcome to the Peabody, the South's Grand Hotel. Southern novelist David Cole once wrote that the Mississippi Delta begins here in the lobby of the Peabody Hotel, and that phrase is as good today as it's ever been. The Peabody's history began back in 1869, just a couple of blocks from here at May and Monroe. Colonel Robert Bracey was our founder, and he had set out to build the finest hotel the Mid-South had ever seen, and name it the Brakeley House. And he succeeded on that first point, but just before the grand opening, his good friend Mr. George Peabody passed away. Mr. Peabody was not just a good friend of the owner, he was also a noted humanitarian and philanthropist. And it was in his honor that the name was changed from the Brakeley House to the Peabody Hotel. So the Peabody has always stood as a symbol of Southern hospitality and elegance, and it was so at Main and Monroe until 1923. It had been decided that we needed to expand and relocate to here, 149 Union Avenue. So after two years and about $5 million in construction, on September 1st, 1925, the Peabody reopened its doors to the beautiful hotel we stand in today. The Peabody has also served as a social center here in Memphis. We have played host to countless weddings, proms, parties, and celebrations. Many of those have been hosted on the Peabody rooftop, where we have a gorgeous view of downtown Memphis and the Mississippi River, as well as the Royal Duck Palace, the lavish livings of our fine feathered friends. If you'd like to visit the rooftop of the Duck Palace, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to. Hop into the elevators after 6 o'clock, hit S for Skyway, and take a right out the double doors. On the way back down, or while we're waiting for the rooftop to reopen at 6, I encourage us to visit our memorabilia room. It's up here on the mezzanine, just above the gift shop. In there we have artifacts and stories unique to the Peabody's history. We have portraits of presidents and stars who have graced our halls. We have played host, in fact, to every president since Harry Truman here at the hotel. We have a piece of Elvis Presley's first contract, which was typed and signed here in this very lobby. And of course, we have my favorite artifact, a memo to our general manager regarding the menu over at Shea Philippe, explaining to him that well, we can have absolutely no doubt served on any menu here at the hotel. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, no we're of course here to see the march of those Peabody Ducks. But if we haven't done so before, it may surprise us to learn that our whole tradition here got started with a bit of a practical joke. In 1933, our general manager, Mr. Frank Scott, and his friend Chuck Rob Hunting in Arkansas. And they brought with them, of course, some live duck decoys and helped them hunt. They also had with them some Jeff Daniels to help them keep warm. Now, the gentleman booked a bit more on the Jeff Daniels. They were quite got around to hunting, and so were surprised when they returned to the hotel and found that they had forgotten to leave their three English called up back at the farm. They improvised, snuck them into the hotel lobby, and let them loose into the fountain instead. Third D. Gunn and gentlemen retired to their rooms for the night, but when they came down the next morning, they found a few things they didn't expect. And they were, of course, relieved to find the ducks had stayed in the fountain the entire night long. They never hopped out, flapped about the lobby, or walked off into the sides of Memphis. However, they weren't really concerned by the crowd that had gathered in the lobby. But they rushed over. They apologized. Said that they would be cleaned up right away, but the people there said no. They loved it and suggested instead that we let them stay as our guests. So ladies and gentlemen, we have continued to honor that request, for we have had ducks as permanent residents here at the hotel for the past 80 years. Then in 1940, we had a gentleman join us of Belma, Mr. Edward Pembroke. Mr. Pembroke was a retired animal trainer for Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus, and he told us if given the opportunity, he would train our North American mallards to march across the rooftop, ride down the elevators, and then march down the red carpet into our lobby fountain every morning at 11 o'clock. There they would stay until 5 p.m. when he would usher them out of the fountain, march them back up the red carpet, up the elevators, and back to their rooms. And Mr. Premier proposed this to management, and they were skeptical, of course, but they told him that if he could figure that out, they'd let him do it for as long as he'd like. Mr. Premier went on to march dust with us here at the Peabody for 50 years. He also did the ducks all across the country. They were on the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. They were featured in People Magazine, Ian Ducks, even made a very special guest appearance on Sesame Street for National Rubber Ducky Day. <laughs> Mr. Trumper did so much for the hotel, but especially for our ducks, and he was named the world's first duck master. My name is Anthony, I'm actually only the fifth duck master since 1940, and in just a few moments it'll be my honor to continue our tradition for you. But first, on rare occasion, I have the honor and privilege of sharing the news with Duckmaster. 
Today is one of those days. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my honorary Jump Masters, Brooke and Hunter. Come on up. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want us all to know what it means to be nominated as honorary Gun Masters here at the hotel. It is an official station. It has official duties, and as such, it has an official proclamation. Whereas, the deadly march of the world-famous Peabody Ducks is a time-honored tradition began in 1933 and attended by countless visitors. And whereas, the care and protection of the Peabody Ducks must be attended to on a daily basis and can only fall to persons of high standards and great distinction, and whereas, you guys are getting married tomorrow, and result. Be a result that on April 19, 2013, Brooke and Hunter have been chosen honorary Dog Masters. <laughs> of course, in honor of the events, both the Duck March and the wedding tomorrow, we give you with this your very own honorary Duck Masters. Yeah. And Now, in just a few moments, ladies and gentlemen, we'll use these symbols of office. We'll usher the ducks out of the fountain. We'll march them back at the red carpet of the elevators and back to their rooms. We do ask that we are free part of the red carpet and the entrance to the elevator, that we keep those areas clear and please also resist the urge to reach out and test it up there on wild animals visiting with us after all. Please do our best to remain seated here in the lobby. But finally, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, please take as many flash photos as you like. You are all guests with us here tonight at Peabody, and this march is for you. On behalf of the ladies and gentlemen and ducks here at the hotel, we thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful night. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and your attention, please. Welcome to the historic Peabody Hotel at the center of the Grand Lobby, the point where the Mississippi Delta has been set to begin, stands the classic Peabody Pumper, carved from one piece of Italian travertine marble. Although famous in its own right, the fountain is better known the world over because of its residence. If I may direct your attention to the fountain now, you will witness a tradition begun in the 1930s at the South Grand Hotel, an experience uniquely yours as a guest of the Peabody. Preparing to return to their penthouse on the plantation roof for tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, the march of the world famous Peabody Ducks. There they go. Uh, so nice. 